Yep, it is pretty much official. We now know the flagship SoC that will be powering the upcoming Galaxy S22 series early next year in 2022. Qualcomm are holding their annual Snapdragon Summit and have officially announced their new premium flagship SoC called the Snapdragon 8 Gen 1. Hi, Ben from Sam Mobile. If you enjoy exclusive and new videos like this, then be sure to like, subscribe, and turn on notifications so you don't miss any new videos on YouTube with Sam Mobile TV. Here is our quick summary breakdown of the Snapdragon 8 Gen 1, and also what we know so far with the Galaxy S22 series. Like clockwork, we expect a new slew of SoC announcements from Qualcomm, especially around this time of year when they hold their Snapdragon Summit. Of all of them, the most anticipated announcement is always their top tier flagship SoC, which last year was the Snapdragon 888 or 888. But for the end of this year into 2022, it's now called the Snapdragon 8 Gen 1. It's interesting to see a new direction in the naming of their flagship SoC, as we were expecting them to go down their current naming order and call it the Snapdragon 898. Nonetheless, with the new naming aside, let's do a quick overview and breakdown of what's new with the things on the Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 and what it brings and what that could mean for the Galaxy S22 series. In terms of the design and performance, the Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 is based on a new 4 nanometer fabrication process from Samsung for better efficiency and also an optical design with a 134 configuration with the most powerful core clocking all the way up to 3 gigahertz and the three middle cores clock into 2.5 gigahertz and the last four efficiency cores at 1.8 gigahertz. What Qualcomm are stating is that the new SoC is up to 20% faster in CPU performance and up to 30% more efficient when it comes to power draw. Now Qualcomm have taken away the numbered naming for their cryo CPU cores and Adreno graphics cores. So referencing where they sit in performance relative to their SoC name will be interesting to see going forward. In regards to the GPU, Qualcomm are stating a 30% boost up to and 25% more efficient in power draw as well. There is also support for LPDDR5 at 3200 megahertz speed, which is an increase. What looks to also be a massive improvement in the area of the system on a chip is the image signal processor section of the SoC known as the ISP for videos and photos when using the camera. Known as the Snapdragon site, you now have support for 18-bit photos in RAW up from 14-bit, which gives an additional up to 14 stops of dynamic range and also the ability to shoot 8K video in HDR up to 30 frames a second with video stabilization and also the ability to take 64 megapixel stills at the same time while recording in 8K. Very impressive. There's even now a dedicated bokeh engine for portrait mode in photos and video with support for it in 4K, which I am personally very excited about. Qualcomm have also doubled their tensor performance for better AI operation across the board as well with what they now call their seventh gen AI engine. In conclusion, there is support for Wi-Fi 6 and Wi-Fi 6E and also support for Bluetooth low energy audio as well. As expected, we do see improvements to 5G with increased speeds at 10 gigabits per second. That overall sums it up for the new Snapdragon 8 Gen 1, which based on Qualcomm's track record, looks to be very promising in regards to the overall performance and efficiency. Again, real world testing will be the final judgment, but what does that mean for the upcoming Galaxy S22 series? With what we know so far and how much of the new improvements from the Snapdragon 8 Gen 1, what will we see in regards to the Galaxy S22 series? Again, we are expecting to see three models, the Galaxy S22, S22 Plus and the Galaxy S22 Ultra. The Galaxy S22 Ultra display size is set to be around 6.0 to 6.1 inches with the Galaxy S22 Plus at 6.5 to 6.6 inches, both with a 1080p 120Hz dynamic AMOLED display. The Galaxy S22 Ultra is set to have a 6.8 inch display with a QHD Plus 120Hz dynamic AMOLED display with S Pen support. Now what's interesting is that rumors suggest that the Galaxy S22 and S22 Plus will be switching to a new 50 megapixel main sensor up from 12 megapixel previously and could feature a true optical 3x zoom at 10 megapixels. We'll have to wait and see if that's all true. 
It's also believed initially that we would see Samsung's new HP One 200 megapixel sensor in the Galaxy S22 Ultra, but later rumors stated in terms of the hardware, things will be based around 108 megapixel main sensor like before found on the Galaxy S21 Ultra. Again, final word when things are official. The big thing now for the Galaxy S22 series is the performance. Yes, we know the Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 will be powering them, but that is just half of the story. As you know, for the longest time, Samsung gives you either an Exynos or Snapdragon model with their flagships depending on what region and country in the world that you are based. That means we should be expecting the counterpart, the Exynos 2200. And again, how powerful and efficient the upcoming Exynos 2200 will be is yet to be seen, but inevitably, what features will be enabled or and disabled will be in line with what Qualcomm have announced and also how Samsung's partnership with AMD Radeon Graphics will look like in the upcoming year for Exynos. What could be interesting is that reports also suggest Samsung could be changing things when it comes to where it launches the Snapdragon variants, with markets like India reportedly this time round getting the Snapdragon and also with the Snapdragon coming to more markets than before. Fingers crossed. As we discussed in our recent Tech Talk video, which we highly recommend you watch, the recent leaks of the Galaxy S22 Ultra showcase the S Pen built into the frame of the phone and a new rear camera design for the cameras and also an overall more boxy design, which is reminiscent of the Galaxy Note series. Again, everything is still up in the air until the official announcement of the Galaxy S22 series. But so far, things are looking promising with a lot of potential on display. Let us know your thoughts on the newly announced Snapdragon 8 Gen 1. Are you in a region and country where you usually have access to the Snapdragon models of Galaxy flagships? And how do you think the Exynos counterpart will hold up against it? For the latest news in the world of Samsung Daily, be sure to visit us at sammobile.com. For the latest videos on YouTube with Sam Mobile TV, be sure to subscribe and turn on notifications and we will see you next time.